pretty close to 6.15. I think by the time we start talking about what time it is, it'll be 6.15. So at this point, I'd like to ask if anyone has any additions to the agenda that's posted. Yeah, do and I do. Yep. How about Thanks. Mr. Beck? Yeah, I'd like to just talk a bit about uh, impact of the Bethel Mountain Road closure on ambulance service from wherever. Robert. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yep. I have some questions regarding the same as the former. Okay. And hearing no more, we'll um, move forward with the um, the uh, minutes from the prior meeting on July twelfth, and they looked complete to me. So. I'd move to approve unless you guys have any modifications on them. Just that one little modification I made on the investigation, investigating. No, there's there all just typo. Word. typo. Typo. All right. I second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Got this. Um, and we have, um, there's some updates for the office hours for August 5th. Yeah. Uh, the office will be closed from 1230. Uh, we'll only be open until 1230. Until 1230 on August 5th, from 9 to 1230. Mm -hmm. Okay. What day of the week is that? That's a Thursday. 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 Okay. I think it's Thursday. Yeah. 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 All right. Cheers. <coughs> let's see. Um, well, let's. Um, Get right into them, Vic. You want to um, open up to questions or? Talk yeah, well, let me just the... uh, give a little brief. Um, so, uh, for those who may not know, I represent Rochester on the board of the Cry River Valley Ambulance. And in, in looking at the situation with the road closure up at Bethel Mountain Road for what looks like maybe, hopefully, two, but could be as much as four weeks, I guess. Um, full of Brookfield and Barnard, um, and then south of us, uh, Stockbridge and Pittsfield, and then the three towns that will be affected by the road closure, are Rochester, Hancock, and Granville. And um, the, uh, the ambulances will be traveling via uh, Route 107 as opposed to going Camp Brook Road to uh, Bethel Mountain Road as they ordinarily do. They'll take about 15 minutes longer. Um, we looked at uh, the possibility of going over a Dart Hill Road down to Music Mountain, but uh, that's mostly a dirt road, as you might know, and uh, would be unsafe to travel more than about 25 miles an hour for most of it. So uh, we think it's safer and no longer time-wise to go around on Route 107. Um, we then looked at the call data in terms of how many calls come to these three towns versus on the other side of the mountain, and it's it was quite a difference. So looking back at the, the prior three months, uh, there were 38 calls to Rochester, Hancock and Granville. At the same time, uh, there were 326 calls to the five towns on the other side of the mountain. So um, they're gonna, and, and the final thing I, I would mention is that uh, we also have on this side of the mountain, the Granville First Response Service, which the town pays for. Uh, which is a volunteer service where there are uh, trained and, and certified people who are volunteers who come to every uh, ambulance call to these three towns anyway. They typically arrive about 10 minutes before the Werva ambulance arrives. And uh, so in this case, uh, they will be uh, the only service on scene for a, a bit longer time until the Werva ambulance actually gets here. Um, and uh, Dan Sargent, the manager of that team, of that uh, service, he's the uh, 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 Granville uh, Fire Chief as well. He and uh, Matt Paris, the director of uh, Werva, have been in uh, discussion and, and are well aware of the circumstance on Bethel Mountain Road and uh, uh, agree that this is uh, the best, uh, not ideal, but this is the best option for uh, responding to the, the road closure for that period of time. We did look at putting uh, one of the two ambulances on this side of the mountain, but the difference in numbers of calls is so 
extreme. Uh, there's like nine times more calls on the other side of the mountain that it didn't make sense to do that, particularly since we have the the uh, Granville first response team here uh, anyway. So, so that's the that's the plan, and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions if anybody has any. And the Granville first response team transport, or are they just no. um, report on they, site. They, they report on scene and stabilize on the scene, and uh, they do not transport. Okay. So it'll still be a word of ambulance. Now, uh, if, if the two word of ambulances are tied up on the other side of the mountain, they will call uh, mutual aid either from Middlebury or from Med River, uh, which happens from time to time. Uh, so that's another backup that's available. What's the timing difference for them compared to the new time that it'll take Randolph to get here? Uh, it's probably not much different. I think to get down, from, I know I, I happen to speak of, I don't have the, the data, but I spoke with a friend uh, who had, his wife was injured in Hancock uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said it took uh, about 30 minutes for Mad River to get down here from Waitsfield to Hancock, which would be about the same time from Randolph or Bethel. Um, excuse me, Vic. Um, yeah. You said they, they respond and stay on the scene, but do not transport Granville first response, right? But Correct. when you say by by responding and stay on the scene, you mean you, you do. Does that mean that they'll, you know, like start treatment if needed? Oh, yeah, they, that's why they that's, that's, what why I they thought. Come. Okay, that's, that's what purpose. I thought. Yeah, yeah, they, they respond and initiate care and uh, and then work with the Werva crew once they arrive. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Seems like there's been pretty good warnings at the road signs are, are pretty effective. So um, yeah. everybody knows what's going on. I just hope the tractor trailers pay attention. <laughs> yeah. So where exactly um, is it like completely blocked off if they if somebody in the tractor trailer did start up the other side or something or our side? Terry Savage's right, right, Terry Savage's house. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought, but I, I mean, I didn't drive up there to see, I just thought so. Uh, okay. well, there will be times, sorry, uh, Mrs. Jones, there'll be times when Bethel is doing work on Camp Brook Road. Right. I know what that yeah, schedule we're, is. Well, we're, we're told that times. they will keep one lane open uh, uh -huh. at all times. Oh, okay. Good. All right. We'll have a flagger and we'll let currency be okay. open through. All right. Um, thank you, Vic. Does that cover your report? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, am I correct that um, the the work that's starting starts August second and could last anywhere from two to four weeks? Is that correct to, to say? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's thank right. you. Yeah. All right, Robert, you had a question about Bethel Mountain Road closure, also. Yeah, there are many that I uh, submitted to you. I think I requested that you would uh, present them to Martha and the rest of the select board in chronological order. And they're not from me. They are from town members of Rochester with very serious questions. And sadly, they don't want to come forward because whatever. But I, I want to, um, <clears throat> most importantly, um, communicate this with Martha, Orca, and Zoom, that <clears throat> I have requested, hello? Hello. Look, yeah, we're here. I simply requested the contact number for the contractor that was awarded the bid for this debauchery. I asked you, uh, I asked Patty, I yeah. asked Frank, I asked Julie, I asked Bethel. They, everyone has denied me of a contact number for the contractor. So I requested from you, Dune, and I thought Julie would have provided that to me, the printed hard copy contract of GNN with taking responsibilities to this uh, situation, because it, it really is not good. So I have not gotten a, a, a response from anyone. And the number, the, uh, the contact number on GNN's website does not connect. So, I, so I'm, I'm curious, what is it that you want to ask of GNN that you can't ask of us? I, I don't think that, that that really isn't your business. 
it, all I'm asking well, for if is- If it's not my business, then I, you look up their number. I mean, I, I looked up- June, uh, and you June, said let me, let me make this work. clear. Patty made it very clear to me that yeah. this project has been in the works for two years. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. And now we're going to execute it. The execution and the communication of it is a debauchery. All I'm at, so let me ask you, is there a hard copy signed by you, Patty, and Frank in the office of the town clerk with the address and phone number of the contacts of GNN? I believe there is a contract in here, and the, and the road is not closed as of yet, so you, you, you can drive down here and check it out if you want. Uh, no, I, I would suggest to you that um, it, it should be easy for Patty, Frank, or you, or Julie, to submit the number of the contractor that is going to hold up 10 miles of road, ambulances, transport, commerce, local people, and I can't even get the phone number from three elected officials from the town of Rochester? So Are you kidding me? I looked it up online, and it's the same number that you said did not work. So I, I dialed the number. I, I have, I have dialed the number, back and forth. Eight zero two, no eight zero two, four nine six. It doesn't connect. So, so don't, don't, don't contact number. Then what? Um, I'm you asking you um, for the contact number of the, of the. Uh, uh, proper the, the 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 number one man that's going to do the project. I want his phone number. Hold because... on, hold on. We will check for you. Just hold on for a second, Robert. Joan, are you there, Joan? Joan? Yeah, she's there. Do you have a contact number for Michelle at GNN? I do. Well, that would have been easy for Frank or Patty or, or yeah. Dune to reach out to Joan to just we submit all, the number. We all referred you to Joan to obtain that number because we put, we didn't have it. Yeah. Well, our... wait a second. You guys are elected officials, and Joan is the default for communication? She is. She's... She is our administrative assistant. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So yeah. what I'm requesting is the number for GNN, the head person, and Joan's direct uh, contact phone number, not email address, with the state. So let let's go first with the Joan has Joan has Joan has the contact number for GNN. So let's roll with that first. So Joan, you want to give that to Robert? Uh, I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, may I suggest? That I uh, give it to Julie tomorrow. I don't think that's proper. Wait, well, it's, it's, uh, wait, it's, wait, wait, wait. So Joni is denying me of the phone number that I've requested from three elected no, officials. No, she just she's not offered not to send it to you tomorrow, Robert. She, she's on Zoom, so yeah. she just physically doesn't have it in front of her because she's on Zoom just like you are. So it sounds like you've made your request and, and Julie will get that number and have it for you tomorrow. But I'm, I'm curious, what, um, what, do you, what questions do you have of them that you don't think that we can, we can answer here for you? Well, you just suggested that you can't answer them. So why should I present them? Uh, there's one big question for a lot of people that deals with the uh, property owners at the covert connection that's going to be ripped up and many people are concerned and, and this will prove that this is local conversations between a number of people in Rochester not Bethel there's a there's a generator on a property above the covert and um, there are a number of people insisting that that be put into the deed before that person's home is sold. Uh, this not is my business. Total different, you're, um, this is a total different conversation you're going on to. We're talking well, about I'm just, I'm, I'm just presenting. Um, pre We're talking okay. about the closure of Bethel Mountain Road 
and you're um well you're no i no the reason i brought that up is yeah. because you know i drive around town and oh, talk with people sense. and there's many concerns all right well and encourage them to to bring their concerns here i know you're you're calling from bethel and you're acting as a spokesperson for rochester people and that that is um i find that slightly awkward because it's um it's well it's a little off topic now we're talking about the road correct right so um the plan well, what, what, what <laughs> questions do you have about it that that we can answer for you here what what are you gonna think that that gnn will tell you that we can't tell you dune i presented qu 10 questions to you on saturday i asked you to submit them to this meeting tonight in chronological order and you're you are not presenting them They've already been. Yeah, it was um, it was um, a little um, off the wall, I thought. Yeah, but um, oh. Oh. there. So, so Robert, uh, do you have any specific questions that you can verbalize right now for us, so we could um, answer them and then move on with the meeting? Okay, is it a possibility that I can uh, retain the? official document from the town of rochester with your signature patty's signature frank's signature with regard to the culvert exchange the 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 printed document the contract yes. between the town and, and gnf right and that was one of my questions is the contract a public document so, and uh, i think it should be yeah you know, you know. so, so is that, that a uh, yes or, or no or a no document? yeah yeah yeah, if you want to copy that, it's too late to put in a, a bid for it, though. If that's what you're thinking, but uh, yeah. So when you come, that, that was that was actually kind of snide. Um, okay, I'm, well, I'm me. requesting the official stationery uh, yes, yes. from. So when you no. come to get the phone number tomorrow, you could get a copy of that too. All right. So I want to make this clear to Martha and the recording on Orca that the town of Rochester is denying me of contact numbers for um, a contractor. No, we're not denying you anything. You know, so uh, Robert, you're um, you're um, Dude, don't kind of speaking in circles. We just oh. we just made a deal. You're coming tomorrow to get the phone number and a copy of the contract. And so how can you say that you're going on record saying we're denying that information to you that's illogical. You know, I, I um, do you have any other specific questions that we could answer? You? Yes. Yeah. Lastly, I would like to ask the total cost of the culvert replacement on Bethel Mountain Road. What is in the contract? What is the total cost? Yeah. I, I, I don't want to hear oh, if the weather's bad and everything else. What is the sig What's the total number for the covert exchange signed by the town of Rochester? Thanks, looking it up for you right now. What the job is. All right, the total cost of the job is $211,530. Wow, that's, that's much cheaper than I thought. Well, I hope with that cost, I hope that the uh, inconvenience of thousands of people. Oh my goodness. Uh, um, the, uh, oh, hang on just a minute. I'm, I'm on a Zoom meeting, meeting with the Martha, town. You can, uh, you could, um, why don't you mute until you have a question, Martha? Um, I, yeah. I'm, my car is fixed. Yep, so I, that, I got that. I'll, 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 we're going to stop the dinner. You can but I've already you. had dinner. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was a big surprise. Go ahead. That's great. So, Robert, that was the same information that was shared at the last select board meeting, too, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's not, not a secret. Okay. So, what did I miss there? I'm sorry. When no. I had my burst of company. Um, the total cost of the culvert exchange is signed by the town of Rochester is two hundred eleven thousand five hundred and thirty. Yep. Okay. Yep. And did I miss anything else when everybody burst in the door? Nope. You're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you very much. All right. 
So Robert, you're good. You've got a date tomorrow to get the information that you want. Yes, it'll be it'll be uh, retained. Um, so Dune, your legal name is is Dune Hendricks, but what's your legal name? <clears throat> Uh, your birth it's name. Wesley Hendricks. I think you know that, right? Yeah. It's Wesley Hendricks? Yeah. Leslie, so not you, Wesley. Leslie. Yes. Leslie Hendricks. So when you sign I contracts for lie. Rochester, no, I'm just asking. When you sign a contract with the town of Rochester as the select board and the road commissioner, do you sign it Leslie Hendricks or do you sign it Dune Hendricks? I. I for the most part, sign at Dune Hendricks, unless there's something very binding as if a um, dealing with banks and such, then I'll um, use Leslie as I do in my personal life. Yeah. Well, thank you for the information. You're welcome. I use Pat, Pat instead of Patricia. Yeah. I use no, Julia Julia. Julia. All right. I have, all right. I have answers for all 10 of the questions. He just, just hung up, so he's done. So, okay. Good job. Joan. Um, you're up. Okay. <laughs> um, there. Um, should we start with Bethel Mountain Road? <laughs> yeah, let's start with Bethel Mountain Road. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything more I can tell you that you don't already want to answer? Um, we're still on track for the work beginning Monday, August 2nd. Um, the notice will be uh, in the next two weeks in the Herald, next week and the following week, um, backing up the electronic uh, message boards that went up the end of last week. And I'm sure you know, there was a little bit of, um, uh, what shall I call it, um, unhappiness uh, with how the message board was working. Um, so I talked to the person from GNN, the contractor, uh, to figure out what was wrong with the message and how it could be fixed. So she did take care of that. Um, and I assume it's fixed by now. The problem was it was a two-part message. You know, it flashed one thing on the board and then a certain time later it would flash the rest of the message. And so the first part of the message, which is probably all people, some drivers saw it, depending on how fast they were driving, um, they didn't see the full information about when the project was gonna start and when it was estimated to finish. Um, so I think that's now been fixed. Um, Julie, are you getting any more complaints from people? No. 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 Okay. Good. So I assume it's been fixed. Um, so when I first saw it, it just said Bethel Mountain Road closed. Period. And then you waited a minute, and then it said project work starts I August second. Right. So that's what Weird. that's what she had had um, her supplier fix. So I assume the message is. Yeah, it's pretty just clear, you know, starting the second. Just yeah. for FYI, this is something I didn't know, but apparently they set these two-part messages um, to what the speed limit is on the road when they're going past that sign. But since we all know that nobody pays any attention to the speed limits anyway, I think that's what happened is it wasn't going fast enough for people. So anyway... There are also additional signs going up and um, I haven't been over the mountain recently, so I, I don't know if they've gone up yet, but there are signs that warn drivers that continue up Camp Brook Road or Bethel Mountain from either side uh, saying, you know, mile ahead, road closed, half mile ahead, road closed, that sort of thing. So there's plenty of warning. And uh, Frank has seen the message that's, or the notice that's going in the paper for the next two weeks, which also advises people that the road is closed to all through traffic. And um, I hope people realize that means, obviously, if they're not going as far as where the closure will be, that they're still free to go up and down the road as they need to. Uh, and the main message, of course, is for the trucks. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on to other business. Uh, last week I had a handoff phone call with FEMA uh, and with the state of Vermont, the Department of Public Service, who handles FEMA projects on the state's end. So now we're officially um, handed off from FEMA. We're not dealing with them anymore, um, which is progress. Um, and the work for 
all of the road work, I mean, I'm sorry, the funding for all of the road work that was completed by December of 2019, which is what uh, is called completed road project, um, has been obligated by FEMA to the state, which means that the money is now available at the state level to reimburse the town for that portion of the work that's been done. Um, I know you've heard this many times before, and I still can't predict when that money's going to come from the state, but it's a whole lot closer than it was uh, last year. And that amount of money is $242,553.94. So $242,553.94? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Well, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. So where does so, that leave the retaining wall project? Uh, the retaining wall project is still in the mix. Um, I think I emailed all of you, or maybe I'm not sure who I told, um, but I did email who Was it just you or all three of you? Anyway, we do have an extension for until the end of 2022 to do the retaining wall with okay. FEMA. Right, good. So that gives you plenty of time to sort out, hopefully, you know, where other money might be coming from. I'm holding, yeah, right. looking into the, uh, the USDA program, since that would just uh, provide another 35% of the project cost. So which is roughly equivalent to what FEMA would give us. So we would still have presumably a, a gap of another 15 plus thousand dollars for that project. So I figure the thing to do since, um, you know, working through a, a loan or preferably a grant from USDA, USDA would be a huge amount of work. I figure maybe give it some time to figure out where funding might come from and then decide whether we need it or not. Does that sound all right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Sounds right. Okay. That's good they all gave right. that extension, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, they, they give us two, and that, that would be the second one. Yeah. Um, so sub I submitted a historical and environmental review package to also Department of Public Service. That's for the backup generator project. Yep. We, I think I told you already that uh, we have conditional approval for that grant, and um, I think uh, it's subject to <laughs> passing the... Excuse yeah. me, Joan, I'm sorry. You submitted a historical and environmental review package for the, and I'm sorry, I couldn't write that fast. I apologize. Back, the backup generator grant. Thank you. Which is a homeland security project. Um, so I believe that's the last thing we have to do before we get final approval, which is uh, sometime in October. And then we'll have to put it out to bid again. Um, is there a, a dollar sign on that for that grant? Do you yes. Uh, let me see. We submitted for $10,775. Okay. Which was based on the three quotes that we got. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember what that was. Thank you. Yeah. And hopefully uh, costs will not go up a lot from when we got those quotes. Right. It was a little hard to predict. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it. I've just been doing the usual stuff I do, providing, helping Julie and uh, Kristen as needed with information needed by the auditor for the year-end audit. Yeah. Another regular stuff. Is, right. is there anything further on that West Hill Bridge? Have you heard? Um, from the in terms of funding, no. Uh, I did get a request from Brian Austin a couple of weeks ago. We have a small gap in uh, the difference between their grant for the design, which was $60,000 from them, and our contract, which is $63,000 and change. Um, so I asked him if he would have any money hanging around that could at least cover the town's uh, additional cost for the contract. And he said, he thought he might, but I haven't heard from him since. Um, and there's no new news on, on the actual construction costs. 
Okay. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay. Yep. I don't see Tony here um, tonight to talk about the library or anyone from the, the highway department. I know they've been um, doing a lot of ditching, putting in culverts, and doing summer work. Um, Terry's not here, but our energy coordinator, Jeff, is here. Would you like to speak about something? Uh, very little to, uh, to discuss. Um, we were to meet last week with the Energy Efficiency Incorporated you know, to, look at the sec to look at half of the high school building mm -hmm. that got pushed off to this week. And do uh, you remember, Frank, whether it's the 28th or 29th that we're supposed to meet with? I, I think it's the 28th. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Wednesday morning at nine o'clock to see the half of the high school we couldn't see because of uh, right. the busy camp. Right. Um, um, we, we probably should get in touch with the, the keeper there, the management. Yeah. So we can unlock those doors. I don't think I don't think my my wife's key didn't work there, so I will have to get in touch with Jesse on that. I have one. I have a key. Yeah, well, I got a key to get into the building. It's not that though the the furnace room and all that doesn't work with our keys. And so Jesse has the key for that. So and that's the part we need to look at. Yeah. So I'll call my tomorrow and it, arrange to pick that up. Okay, cool. Um, I did get uh, great support and assistance from Kristen uh, getting uh, CD oil bills uh, mostly straightened away. There seems to be, um, we still seem, it looks like we must be missing some somewhere uh, in the record. Um, so I'll have another conversation with CB Oil and, and try to clarify that. I mean, we see patterns developing and then suddenly there's a gap in the, in the in history. <laughs> um, well, if there's no expense shown, that would look to be in our favor, but uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> And uh, still need more data on the high school too. Um, but they have uh, Energy Efficiency Incorporated has the electrical expenses and will soon have all of the uh, oil expenses except cost of goods in the school. That's a good start. Yeah. Yeah, there was only one thing that they gave me that we had questions about, but it just looks like there's some holes. Even if it went to the other, to the oil Okay. We're continue investigating. Yeah. 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 Excuse me. No other right. expenditures uh, or plans for anything that discusses energy. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Right. And um, under the new business, we have a park use application for memorial poetry reading in remembrance of Phyllis Sawyer. And that is dated um, that would be on August 19th, 30. So that's a uh, a Thursday, it looks like. August nineteenth. Um, yeah. Is that a Thursday? Uh, We're looking. August nineteenth. From when to when? It's a Thursday Thursday evening from four p.m. till six thirty p.m. Yeah. Four to six thirty. Okay, thank you. And that's um, the organization sponsoring it is the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. And that's a memorial poetry reading of Phyllis Sawyer, Larry B. in remembrance of her life. Um, having to have a gathering of give or take 20 people in and around the gazebo on one table and refreshments. And I would move to approve that application. I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Just should note it to our lawn mowing people just in case. Mm -hmm. They're usually I during think, the day. But. I think John is last week he mowed it. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yeah. During the day, mm -hmm. too, not in the evening. Yeah. And um, the Be the Change uh, update, it sounds like um, potentially something might. 
come to um, flower up at Hop. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yep. That would be wonderful. Yep. Just, uh, just what is Be the Change? I'm confused. I don't remember. Uh, I'm sorry. Be the Change is a, is, a, is a push to have each town in Vermont dedicate an acre mm -hmm. to um, flowers that'll um, feed the um, feed the bees and other small creatures that that feed on them. It's um, basically a an initiative to develop awareness and support of the um, And so this is how you you found land up in Hawk that you um, there's it? there's conversation happening and potentially we can't nothing. Um, decided specifically, but that's um, that's a potential um, candidate for that. Yep. Do you have anything to add on that? Um, it was just interesting to you know today um, I belong to a Facebook page that uh, uh, basically bird watchers, and they noted the abundance of hummingbirds this year and and some of them some people attribute that to more and more people having pollinator gardens of their own oh, really mm -hmm. so there's benefit not only to the bees and other pollinators but the yeah. hummingbirds too yeah pretty neat yeah Do you have more harlan this year hummingbirds yeah yeah, I have. yeah. it all depends on you know they come they yeah. Lay one set of eggs and then the nose hatch, you've got a billion of them when they start coming to the feeders and everybody mates again. Mm -hmm. Then males drift off and it seems to drop off after that peak about the first week of July. Mm -hmm. I noticed that my mm -hmm. I've seen more this year around our house too. I, mm -hmm. It was just yeah. pretty surprised. Do we have anything else? Um, I have an unexpected company and it looks like we're we're done, but are we or not? I think we're pretty think much we at the bottom of the agenda. So um, you can open the door and let them back in. Uh, actually, they're all in the kitchen cooking something. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Have, have a good evening, everybody. Yes. You thank, thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Joan and um, Orca Media and all you guys that came out on this summery July night. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, it all is right. riveting, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Good night. Character of the pulse of the community. <laughs> <laughs> the heartbeat.